Hey friends, I've got a super interesting video to show you guys today. We are in the process of building an off-grid cabin here in the mountains of Colorado. And one of the things we've really been looking into is solar, getting into the solar experience, looking at different options and kind of choosing what's gonna be best for us in our use case scenario. Now, during the build process for the cabin, we've been using this. This is an Anchor Powerhouse 767. I think it's been renamed recently with their newer versions that they've been putting out. And this is a really great portable power station. It's been really helpful for using power tools, for running our lights, for running our water pump, and doing all sorts of great things. But is this a long-term solution? Probably not. And so that's where having a more permanent solution that lives full-time in the cabin is really gonna be useful for us going forward in the future. So that's where today's product comes into play. This is the EcoWorthy 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And it is a beast. Look how huge this thing is. Let's quickly take a look at all the specs for this specific EcoWorthy battery. So as you can see, the rated capacity is 280 amp hours or 3,584 watt hours. Rated voltage is 12.8. You can see the weight here, it's 64 pounds. So definitely be careful when you're lifting this thing, it is big. Now reference the weight, one of the other things I really like is it has these built-in handles. Now these aren't super sturdy, so don't go throwing this thing around, but it does make lifting really nice to have these on either end of the battery. Now, one of the major differences you're gonna find between one of these all-in-one power stations and then a large standalone battery is that you have to build out all the components that exist in this. But there is an opportunity to save a lot of money if you wanna have all the components individually pieced out and added to your system. So it got me thinking, could we actually use one of these as a standalone piece of equipment as a backup here at our normal house? Now to conduct this test in our house to see if we could use this as a emergency backup during a blackout, we really need two components. One, we need the battery, that's our storage for all of our energy. And then we need something to transfer the energy, this is currently in DC, into AC power, which is something that you normally see in your home. To do that, you actually need an inverter. And we're gonna be using this 2000 watt inverter here. And then we also need some cables that connect from the inverter over into the battery up here on these terminals. Now, like I said, an inverter is pretty simple. It's gonna be powered from this DC battery and it's gonna take all of that power and it's gonna transfer that power into a source that we can use using these plugs that is more typical to what you'd see in a house. Now, just hooking up this battery to the inverter is gonna be fine, but this is going to drain and there's really no way of monitoring it other than looking at the voltage that's coming through the inverter. So you would need like a battery charger they make specifically for these or some sort of solar hookup that is connected to panels that would feed this and replenish all of the juice that we'd be depleting using all of our appliances during a blackout. Now, one of the other things I'd like to see is a fuse here on the positive cable. But again, for our testing purposes, we should be just fine using the standard hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this cable over here to our red terminal using these little included bolts. Basically just go through the eyelet here into here. And then as you can see, there's a Phillips head, little screw on top to tighten things down. Make sure those connections are nice and tight. You don't want any arcing happening with loose connections. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is actually connect our black to our black terminal. This is where you need to be a little bit careful. There can actually be a spark that happens when connecting the inverter. And the instructions basically say this isn't anything to worry about, but you do need to be very, very careful because this can, based off of the power on this, create a decent sized spark. You see that? Now, obviously after you do that once, everything should be good to go. You shouldn't have another spark happen, but do be careful. I'm just gonna tighten that down nice and secure so that we have good connections on both ends. And that's all we really need to do our testing. Again, at this point, this is a very basic, very stripped down version of this portable generator here. So let's go ahead and do some testing. Let's see what we can power with this thing in the event of a blackout. Okay, for our first test, we're gonna see if we can get heat during a blackout, obviously very, very important. This is our Eden Pure heater, and it's a really, really large heater that sits down here in our basement, provides a lot of heat, a lot of warmth, but it takes a lot of power to run. So this is gonna be a really good test to see 
if this can actually power this. So let's go ahead and plug in one end here to our inverter and we can turn the inverter on. Okay, we've got things plugged in. Let's go ahead and hit that power button on the inverter. It's gonna fire up. As you can see, we're getting 13.2 volts coming out of the battery. And we're over here, I've got a light on on the heater. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. We have this on full power as well. And in a minute here, we should get the fan kicking on and pushing out some heat. There we go, you can probably hear it on camera now. I'm actually getting a lot of heat that's blowing out straight at me, providing that warmth. As you can see over here, we're pushing 1400, almost 1500 watts. So that is quite a bit of power that this battery through this inverter is enabling us to do. So again, great first test, we can get some heat. Now obviously this wouldn't last a full day. That's the bad thing about, again, this specific setup is you don't have a good gauge to know how far down this would deplete our battery. But again, in a pinch, if you needed heat, this would work. So I wanna see if this can run our refrigerator. Obviously in the event of a blackout, we wanna make sure all of our food stays nice and cold. So let me grab the plug from the back of the fridge and let's plug it in here and see what happens. Okay, we've got the plug coming out, things are hooked up and we are getting some power in the fridge. I can hear the compressor come on and we have lights in both the upper fridge and the freezer area. So we are running this fridge. That's great, great news. Let's do one more test, and this is our communication test. We wanna make sure we have TV, internet, those kind of things. So let's go ahead and plug this TV into the outlet here and make sure that we can turn on the TV. Okay, we got the TV plugged in with a green extension cord there. Hit the power button here on the remote, and look at that, we've got TV. So again, this was the easy test. This really doesn't take a lot of power to power these newer smart TVs. But again, nice to know we have some entertainment options. Again, we can plug our router or internet in here to make sure we have power. We can use the USB ports over here to charge phones. And again, this is all being done by this powerhouse battery. So there you go, friends. It looks like this thing can do a good job in a pinch as a small little backup system for your regular home if you needed power in the event of a blackout. It definitely can run most of our appliances just fine. What we really need is heat to keep our food cold and some smaller things like a TV, a radio, or internet in order to stay connected and figure out what's going on in our local area. So definitely a cool little battery. You can find it right here on Amazon. If this video has helped, stay tuned. We're actually making a bunch more where we're gonna be setting up our solar system at the off-grid cabin. We're gonna show you all sorts of different options and things that we've tried out. Stay tuned, we'll have those videos for you soon. Thanks for watching, friends. We'll see you again on the next one.